Hello, and welcome to the Drink With Friends demo, where here we have the code, and uh, this represents in the first view, the root view controller in an iOS app, and uh, this is called from the app delegate here. You'll see RU, so Rutgers University Drink With Friends root view controller, uh, storyboard, instantiate initial view controller, and here we go. Let's get started. So. This is the main view, where we have a drink button, a patterns button, bars button, beers button, and friends button, and a mysterious gen button here. And the format of this presentation is going to be uh, tripartite, where um, we'll look for each table, uh, both the input uh, within the iOS app, we'll look a little bit at the code and then we'll confirm that it has actually changed the database um, with a third party open source tool. So let's load up that third party tool now where here in the iPhone simulator application support folder we find our whoops we find our uh, drink with friends database. Here we go. And let's go ahead and put that into its own page. Right, so let's get started. Let's look first at um, friends. So, this list of contacts, or list of potential friends actually, is uh, very large and scrollable. And what this is populated from is the real data in a phone's contacts so this is formatted alphabetically with this nice bold face, but here we have the very same list, um, no, we have the very same list, um, but with one subtle difference. This is not about uh, editing contacts, it's about inputting into the drinkers table. So let's go ahead and check a few friends. Um, and now we'll go over to our third party tool, look at drinkers, and we want to show all. Look at that. Scarlett Abbott, Dexter Albert, Miriam Alvarado, and Miriam Andrews. Um, so also, I'll just go ahead and click them again to remove them. I no longer want to drink with them. Um, let's hit show all again. And you'll see that Scarlett Abbott, Miriam Andrews are the only two that remain. So let's take a quick look at how that code works, where we'll go into... Um, what must be the friends view. No, no, no. It's the preferences and input. Uh, here we are. So, the RU friend insert view controller. Um, where uh, what happens on load is it gets the contacts out of face, out of, uh, not Facebook, out of your address book and um, for the table view, which is the view we're in, the cell for row at index path, uh, which is a section in a row, we get the people object at index, index path dot row, we get their full name, and we set the selection style to none. Um, the, uh, if it's in the database, it gets a check mark. If it's not in the database, it doesn't get a check mark. And additionally, um, in the, let's find the, uh, did select row at index path method, you'll notice that uh, we'll get the people at the, the object at index, index path dot row. If it's in the database already and they select it, that's this action. Uh, we set the accessory type to none and we remove it from the database. If it has the check mark, or sorry, if it's not in the database, uh, we give it the check mark and insert it into the database. And that's what makes this work. Right, so that's that. Um, but let's also look at what happens when we press and hold. So what happened there was I just pressed and hold. And you'll notice that uh, there's a list of beers here, which we'll come to, and there's also this button, bars, which we'll come to a little bit later. Now, let's look at beers. So we have this pre-populated list of most uh, popular 20 beers. Um, but, you know, 
the point of this app is that uh, users hit this drink button, and with a list of friends, with a list of beers, and a list of bars, um, they select who they want to drink with and where, and it logs it and gets patterns. So you know, these drinkers might be niche, niche drinkers. They, you know, they might prefer other beers. So um, if you hit this plus button right here, up comes this uh, um, sheet where you input the beer name and manufacturer. So, um, hmm, let me think of a beer. Uh, so it, I guess it's good that I can't think of one because I'm under 20, but we'll go with uh, uh, Sam Adams Winter Ale. And this is in uh, celebration of the fact that it's actually snowing outside right now. And the beer manufacturer, I'm not really sure, but I imagine it's Sam Adams uh, Brewery. And when you hit OK, and you scroll to the bottom of the database, there we go, we have our Sam Adams Winter Ale. Now, what happens when you click beers here is these are actually, you'll notice at the top it says choice of beer. This is the choice of beer for the user. And uh, what this results in is if we go to the likes database and show all, for our user, we've now checked Bud Light, Coors Light, and Miller Light, where if we continue to add beers, actually, Maybe we don't want to add these beers. These are pretty bad beers. Let's go have our Sam Adams Winter Ale and uh, hit Show All. You'll notice that the user now likes Sam Adams Winter Ale. The user now likes Bush Light. Um, the user likes Miller Light. The user likes Coors Light, where we'll notice here Winter Ale, Bush Light, Miller Light, and Coors Light. Uh, let's take a little look at the code that made this work. Uh, so this is the beer insert controller where, let's take a look at the header file first. Um, there's the plus tapped IB action and there's a mutable array of beers. Um, and here are the private methods where, let's see what happens when it, this method, like the last object we looked at, is uh, requesting from this object the uh, formatted cell for um, an index path and it's a callback so it's actually called by the foundation framework um, and what you provide in here is what makes a table view what populates a table view you'll notice here there's a number of sections number of rows um, but you'll see that uh, this is basic formatting stuff now if the beer at at, in, at the index path dot row is liked by the user, give it a check mark. If it isn't, give it no accessory. Now let's look what happens when you select a row at index path. So this is what gets called when you actually select a row at the index path, where this is all section zero, because there's only one section, and uh, this is row zero, row one, row two. And it, this this is all contained in if I do index path, you'll see there's a section, which is an integer, and there's a row, which is also an integer. Right, so if the beer is liked by the user, give it no... Oh, uh, let's see, this doesn't look right. Um, oh, of course, because this is the selected row index path, so this is right. So if the beer is liked by the user and the thing is selected, you want to get rid of the accessory if it's a check mark. Otherwise, it's being liked by the user for the first time, and you give it a check mark. And um, we call this toggle like beers object at, inge at index path dot row toggle like. So, what is this toggle like? Um, you'll notice that there's this mutable array of beers, and uh, I import what I call this are you beer, and for the beer object, I call this function toggle like. Let's take a look at that. Um, so this is where the magic really happens. Look at all these queries. Um, but specifically, toggle-like, what happens is I wrote this object uh, called the Rutgers Database Manager. And uh, I, it's a singleton, so uh, this handles concurrency issues. There's only ever one instance running 
on uh, on the platform, and so this uh, this avoids messy problems like inputting or like asking for stuff before you've inputted because it's all just done on the same object. So um, if the beer is not liked by the user, insert into table likes with parameters and it's a array, username, self.name, and because this is a beer object, self.name represents the name of the beer of the of the beer and, and the array. Uh, if the beer is liked by the user, because this is a toggle, uh, you're going to delete from likes where drinker is the username and the beer is the name of this beer. Um, the benefits of this object-oriented uh, approach to um, uh, database interaction is that, oh, whoops, I want to go back to that beer. Um, let's take a look at the header. The benefits to this object-oriented approach to uh, database insertion and deletion is that I can just uh, give <coughs> all the columns of my table uh, properties in my object and when I want to do some function that would be, you know, quite complicated to write out each time, I uh, can just write out a function to do it, where I can toggle the like for, I can check if it's liked by the user, and these are all uh, database functions where every single one of them, you know, just insert into database, remove from database. Uh, I wrote uh, ins an insert uh, function in my DB but I did not write a delete method, so I do that each time. Uh, delete from beers, where name equals self.name, and manufacturer equals self.memf, um, and that is just a really easy, and it returns, you'll notice, uh, db execute update delete. It returns a boolean, and if it fails, it really returns false. If it succeeds, it returns true. Um, and uh, I use this all the time to nicely encapsulate all the things I want to know about the database without having to do a, a, a write a query each time. I write the general solution to the query and then utilize it. Huh, this is interesting. Get age group? I wonder what that is. Right. Let's take a look at bars. This is the really exciting part. When I hit bars, oh, it wants my current location. Look at this. We've got a location icon going on. Um, and I'm a little impatient, uh, but the internet at Starbucks is slow. In fact, I'm not even connected. Right, now that we're connected to the internet, let's get to the really exciting part, where if I click bars, you'll notice it's getting the current location. And because I'm in New Brunswick, I'm at Starbucks right now, um, you'll notice that I'm actually right in front of Harvest Moon Brewery. These are all real bars gone from real places. And if I hit back, and what I'm doing now is I'm in the iOS simulator options, uh, changing, uh, there's a place to change the location, where the, where is that, location, here we go, let's go to, um, I think this is Cupertino, so let's see what bars there are in Cupertino, uh, see it's getting the location, oh, it's not working, oh, it's because this is a special uh, Xcode thing, huh, Ah, there we go. No, it worked. So these are um, bars in Cupertino because I changed the the location. Now, uh, what is it that this view actually does? What um, what is its purpose? Well, it's for inserting into the database as usual, where we've checked some bars here. Um, in fact, let's check all of them because you know I want to go drink in Cupertino. I want to go hang out. Uh, and let's see if that's worked. Uh, where we're going to go to the frequency table, show all. Um, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, this is the bars table, um, and show all. And look at all this data we have. Oh my goodness. Um, where we have exactly those bars that we uh, just inputted. And if I were to take one of them out, let's say elephant bar doesn't sound that great. So. Uh, let's show all again. An elephant bar is gone. Uh, let's let's just be a bit more specific about it. So Buffalo Wild Wings, I want to take out. Whoops. Um, so where's Buffalo Wild Wings? There it is. 
uh, and then let's show all. And you'll notice the Buffalo Wild Wings is gone. And uh, the data that we grab is actually, we actually grab quite a bit of data. Um, and this is all from the Apple Maps uh, API, where uh, we've got the phone number, we've got what's called the thoroughfare, the sub thoroughfare, the locality, the sub locality, the administrative area. And this will work anywhere in the world. You can grab real bars from anywhere in the world. But that's not all. If you click and hold, like we did last time for, um, oh wait, no, you have to go to the see all function, which will show you bars in your, in your area. So let's actually go back to New Brunswick. We're traveling all over the place. Um, I think that's the custom location. No, yes, maybe. There we go. We're back in New Brunswick. Let's go ahead and add these back to the database. Um, and when we hit see all, we see the amalgamated list of all the bars that we've inputted. Um, and if you were to click and hold one of these bars, you get to input into what's served and the beer price there. So this is served for, say, $8 here, I think. Uh, that's expensive for Budweiser. This is $7. Um, Natty Light, that's a really cheap beer. $3. So, um, I can't actually remember what bar that was, but let's go to uh, Cells, Show All. And look at that, the Black Angus Steakhouse sells Bud Light for $8, very expensive, Budweiser for 7 and that cheap beer, Natural Light, for $3. Um, and you can do this for any of the bars in your database, where, um, let's go to the local Stuff Your Face. Um, I know that there they serve Heineken, and the, they're reasonable about it, they sell it for $6. Um, let's take a look at that, let's show all. Stuff Your Face, Heineken, $6. Let's take a quick load look at the, at the code that uh, that does this. This is the bar insert view controller where um, so this code is really cool. This is the MK local search request and uh, this is the code that makes local search happen. Uh, so the CLL or the CL location manager uh, did update locations and it gives you a list of of locations and you do a natural language query search for bars in your area, the location's last object, um, and you have a completion handler here, which uh, you know, you'll notice that uh, I there's a little activity indicator that came up and spun and you when your search is done you want to remove that activity indicator. And then when uh, our familiar cell for row and index path uh, uh, let's see, so this is slightly more complicated than the last time, but uh, very basically uh, the cell.textlabel.text is going to be equal to the all of the bars, the object at index path.row and the name of that bar. And um, when it's selected, our familiar did select row and index path, uh, we, if it has the check mark, that means that we're going to want to remove it from the database uh, I wrote a toggle for all bars, but not for local bars, um, for the username that is. And so let's jump to the definition of this thing, specifically in the, this is in the context of a bar. And this is the remove from database function, where you delete from bars, where name is self.name and phone number is self.phone number, because the name and the phone number make up for a a uh, unique key to this. No, no bar is going to have the same name and phone number. And uh, this is the code that makes insertion happen. Uh, let's see if there's anything else of interest here. Um, mm, this get age group. That looks interesting. Uh, is most common gender male? Uh, is in DB? And you can see that all these uh, the, the combination of object oriented programming with uh, traditional SQL programming makes for powerful interactions with the database and compiled code. So we've covered actually friends, beers, and bars. Uh, and this is where the data generation portion of the presentation comes in, where we're going to use this mysterious generate button. And I'm going to click it, and then I'm going to show you what effect it's had. So here we go. Click. You'll notice it's a little slow uh, because it's doing a lot of queries in the database. Uh, but it should turn opaque soon. 
uh, or perhaps not. Um, oh yeah, so it's working, it's working away, and it's done. Brilliant. Um, so uh, I, this is just uh, this printing here is is uh, every time I I need to select to make sure that the insertions worked, I printed it out so that I could watch the progress. But let's click on friends now. You'll notice it's considerably slower because of we put a lot of data in it, especially for a small little iOS app. But um, I think it's worthwhile for the proof of concept of the marketability of this thing. You'll notice that they all have check marks. That all of these friends have a check mark. Um, oh, and I want to demonstrate one more area of insertion first. Where if I click and hold, you know, you'll notice that this person likes random beers. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that data generation code. If we go to bars now, you'll also notice that they like various bars. Uh, this person likes a bar in cappuccino, or two bars in cappuccino, in fact. And this button here switches between the bars and beers for a user, where you can click. And this user will now uh, frequent, in the case of bars, and uh, like, in the case of beers, that beer. So you notice these are all friends, and all of these friends have references. Um, you'll see that this person happens to like Ice House and Modelo is special. Uh, and this is a good point to run through the actual use case of this app, where it's sort of considered something in the neighborhood of a uh, beer journal where you hit drink, you select who you're going to drink with, and this inserts into uh, an area of our data collection that I'll show you in a bit. You hit done, you select the bars you're going to be drinking at that night, you hit done, and it logs the trip. Um, and the benefit that the user accrues from this is found within patterns. So let's take a look at what patterns are. Um, there are three buttons here at the bottom. Bars, beers, best friends. Let's start with best friends. This is the list of friends that the user has dr drank with um, in order of the frequency with which they drank with them. So on this particular uh, generation run, we've, the, the user in this case has drank with this Mike Gurello the most. And uh, this gener uh, gen generate code works as follows. So you'll notice I've got this in the root view controller. I have a generate tapped function, which performs a segue with identifier, drink with people, and sets the uh, generate to true. So let's take a look at that. Let's go into the uh, definition of the, uh, actually I need to click it uh, here. Where here, this is the data generation code, and it's in our uh, view did load, which gets called to call back from the foundation framework, which uh, happens when the view is ready to be presented. And uh, this AB address book ref, um, address book create with options, is grabbing the user, the potential drinkers, and contacts of the person's phone and looping through them for int i, i less than people, i plus plus. Um, and if generate is set to true, which is what happens when you click generate, um, it doesn't actually grab the, um, the user's real information. It, it grabs generated information for the sake of proof of concept, where we have an integer gone out with and we also have um, a randomly generated uh, gender and age group, where gender is 0 or 1, uh, representing male or female, and age group is uh, 0 through 3, representing uh, 21 through 20, or 21 through 29, 31 through 39, uh, 41 through 49, and finally 50 and above. And um, we have decided in advance that, uh, for sake of argument, uh, proof of concept, that uh, if your gender is zero, which I believe is, I can't remember if it's male or female, but it's consistent throughout. I think zero we decided on was 
Uh, female, yeah. And so if you're a, uh, a woman that is aged 21 to 29, you really like drinking Bud Light, Miller Light, Corona Extra, and whatever bar the user first inputted. And this, this happens for all of them, where if your age group is one, uh, which, actually let's take a look at male now and say age group two, which is uh, 31 to 39, you really like drinking natural ice and Bud Light Lime. And you like going to the sixth bar that was inputted. And uh, these numbers are random, but uh, where these numbers are between, this represents a number between zero and one, this represents a number between zero and three, where uh, this number would affect uh, how high it can go. And gone out with is a number between zero and seven. And, uh, or zero and eight, I'm sorry. Um, and if the number is greater than seven, uh, which is a select few, but because there's so much data, it turns out being a lot, um, go to that number and increment the drink count, which, uh, we jump to the definition, update drinkers set gone out with, which is a parameter, to gone out with plus one, where first name is the self dot first name because we're working with objects. Self dot last, excuse me, last name, and that is our data generation code. And what this results in is if we go to patterns, not only do we have the best friends view, but we have this bars and beers view, where if I click on St. John's Bar and Grill, the most common gender is female, the most common age group is 21 to 29. And I think that if we were to uh, remember which bar we inputted first, we'd remember that we inputted this one first, which would make total sense. Uh, uh, stuff your face. So there you go. Now, uh, if we hit beers, we get the same thing. Where... Um, uh, you can go through and take a look at all of our patterns. It looks like they're uh, skewed slightly. Um, but uh, So if you're a male and you're between 30 and 39, you like drinking bush. Uh, if you're a female between 30 and 30, oh, of course they're skewed slightly because they're ordered. Um, and if you're 40 to 49 and male, you like go drinking Bud Light Lime. And if you recall the manner in which we input into the database, it makes sense that as we go up, these age groups go up, um, which is a third sort of third party confirmation that our patterns are working. Right. Thanks a lot for watching. So that's Drink with Friends, where we have bars um, and inserting into uh, the bars database. Um, where for each bar, you can insert into the cells table. We have beers, where uh, the user can like beer. The user can also add uh, beer, generic beer name, generic beer man, man uh, and it's added to the database. And uh, the user can input into friends, where we currently have a lot, a lot of friends because we needed to generate a nice pattern. I can show you that uh, you can in insert and delete from the friends table, or the drinkers table rather, and you can insert into the friends likes, and you can insert into the friends frequents. Um, you can go on a drinking trip with you and your best friends at your favorite bars and log your trips. And uh, you can go in, oh, whoops, and you can see patterns uh, for all the bars, for all the beers, and with your most, um, your best friends, the people you drink the most with. So, thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at paulmmj at gmail.com. And if you'd like to see any of the code, it's all available on GitHub. Thanks.